Welcome back to Next Gen Console Watch, our show following all the news and rumors on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. I'm Damon Hatfield, and as always, I'm joined by Ryan McCaffrey, host of IGN's Xbox Podcast, Podcast Unlocked. Happy summer, Damon. Happy summer. And sitting in for Jonathan Dornbush to speak, Max Scoville, who I believe just hosted an episode of Podcast Beyond himself in Jonathan's stead. Welcome to the show, Max. Hey, thanks for having me. So, this week we are taking a look at the the holiday fall 2022 release schedule, and which is also going to be the second birthday for each console, both PS5 and Xbox Series X. We're on the back side of the sort of summer reveal season, the non-E3 season. We got presentations from both Sony and Xbox. There was Summer Game Fest that had a bunch of third-party announcements, plus the uh, announcement from Sony of The Last of Us Part 1 remake. We had shows from Capcom and Square Enix. So now we have a really good idea of what, of what the fall 2022 release schedule looks like and unfortunately it still is a little bit uh it seems like it's gonna be a little bit of a quiet fall season you know there's definitely some cool stuff coming out and we do have to acknowledge of course we're in unprecedented times really feeling the effects of the pandemic now uh, games that were near the, the finish line when the world went into lockdown back in 2020, they were able to get out the door, but now we're really feeling the effects of games that were in the thick of development then. I think a lot of developers were having a very slow progress during that time while everyone was working from home. So with all that said, this is what we know right now for the holiday slash fall 2022 release schedule. Kicking things off in August is going to be Saints Row, August 23rd. Then we've got Lord of the Rings Gollum, September 1st. And I'm focusing mostly on next-gen games, PS5 and Xbox Series X releases. The Last of Us Part 1 Remake comes September 2nd. Then in October, we've got Marvel's Midnight Suns on October 2nd. Forspoken, PS5 exclusive on October 11th. Scorn, the Xbox console exclusive, is on October 21st. Then we've got Gotham Knights on October 25th. High on Life, another Xbox console exclusive, same day, the 25th. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is the October 28th. And then, skipping November, there's currently no big game uh, scheduled for release in November at this time. We've got Callisto Protocol, very, very cool horror game from the Dead Space creator coming December 2nd. And that's kind of it. As of right now, and I think if we compare that to like the same time period from the 360 generation, which would have been 2007, two years into the, the life of that console, man, what a banger of a holiday season that was with Assassin's Creed, Bioshock, Mass Effect, the Orange Box, Rock Band, those just to name a few. Halo uh, 3? Halo Come 3. On, yeah, Halo sorry, 3, sorry, sorry. one of the biggest games ever? Sorry, you're right. Yeah, I, I'm just, <laughs> I was saying just to name a few. It's just that it, at this point, when you're two years into uh, a, a new console's life. This is when we're supposed to be getting that sort of like big flood of, of impressive new titles, but we're still kind of waiting for that. Um, I don't I, know. I feel Ryan, like this why is start 2014 again. This is like 2014. I, 2014. I remember having very much like that. Like 2015 is when it when it was really coming. That's in. We true. Got, we got like you know Witcher, Witcher, Witcher three, three yeah. and mm-hmm. Metal Gear Solid five and Bloodborne and all that. But 2014 was like I remember it was I think Dragon Age Inquisition and. Uh, Alien Isolation yeah. and, and, and the game that should have won IGN's Game of the Year, Sunset Overdrive. That was the mm. one like shining <clears throat> beacon in the in the Xbox's year that year. I think the most fun I had was uh, the the Sha- Shadow of Mordor. Oh yeah, the first yeah. one. Yeah, yes. yeah. And it was, but it was again, it was a weird time because we had these new consoles and we're kind of like, <laughs> okay. where, where do we yeah. do with them? You know? And, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, Damon, there are a few more, uh, at least on the Xbox side, that we don't have dates for yet, but you're right. right. It's it's still, it, this is not the, the, um, the strongest holiday fall lineup. So you mentioned High on Life. Uh, Grounded is going to be coming out of game preview and getting a full proper release. I mean, if you want to count that, that's up to you because you can technically play that game right now. Pentiment, the narrative adventure. Right. Uh, from Josh Sawyer at Obsidian, so that'll, that's a nice little exclusive there. You mentioned Scorn, uh, Warhammer 40k Darktide, uh, which is, you know, if you need your Warhammer meets Left for Dead fix. I played that uh, at the uh, Summer Game Fest event just a week or so back. That was a lot of fun. So that, that's coming in September. Uh, as Dusk Falls, and then not exclusive, but definitely a, a going to work well on next-gen systems, and it is a day-one Game Pass game, which is Plague Tale Requiem, the, right. the sequel to the first Plague Tale game. So, yeah, it's, uh, there are really no A-listers for Xbox uh, as far as Xbox exclusives this fall, and, you know, Sony's got... The, the wild, the ultimate wild card. Yeah. The Last of Us, part one. <laughs> Again, I mean, that's, you know, that's... Maybe the other wild card. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Forspoken is, is also a weird one. <laughs> I, mean, I keep forgetting about that game 
And I honestly, like, it's one of those games where I'm like, I will, I don't think I'll believe it's a game until I'm playing it myself. Yeah. And that's, you know, with, with all due respect to the people working on it, but it just, it's, it, again, feels like kind of, it almost like came out of left field. You know, it initially was like a, it had one of those like project working titles and it, you know, felt right. kind of tech demo yeah. And then it's kind of been, you know, I feel like promotion for it has been sort of low key. And, you know, again, it, is, is it going to come out this year? I don't know. Uh, same question for the, the true wild card, of course, God of War. That's, yeah. is, is that coming out this fall? That's, that would be, if it does, it sort of almost kind of saves the holiday season for, for, yeah. all, for everybody, I mean, well, really. November's apparently wide open. Yeah, I, it, yeah again, I, again, I forgot that that was coming out. It's, it's a weird year, right? It's, it's a little bit, I don't know, it's slim. I mean, it's, you know, Xbox is trying to feed the Game Pass machine, uh, which is great. They're, and they, hey, everything I just listed, like, I'm very excited for High on Life. I think that's, that's going to be one that I think is going to take people by surprise because it's just, I don't know, man, Justin Roiland mm -hmm. and, and Squanch making a first person shooter with, that has kind of little odd world e vibes from its talking guns. And yeah, no, like, I'm, right, I'm right there with you. That's, I, I think, going to be a, a, a shining beacon of, of originality this fall. And that's, I wasn't even tracking that as a fall release. I, I, I yeah, guess I wasn't that's, paying that's close attention on the, there. But, on the yeah. 2022 list, you know, that, that, that Xbox conference being split in half, basically. It was the six months left of 2022 and the first six months of, of 23. And, and yeah, High on Life was definitely one that jumped out. Pentiment, I, you know, that one... I don't quite know what to think of it yet. I mean, it is, it's, a, it's an Xbox exclusive from a extraordinarily decorated game creator in Josh Sawyer. I mean, you're talking about the lead on Fallout New Vegas making a, a, a narrative adventure RPG that it's set in this, you know, fun time period with, with, a, with a very unique for Obsidian art style. Mm -hmm. Is that going to, like, blow up? I don't know. Like, odds are probably not because it's probably just weird enough where it's not really going to be a mainstream hit kind of thing. But, um, yeah, and, you know, you, Damon mentioned some of the third-party stuff, like Saints Row. That doesn't even feel like fall to me. That's like a – that's still that's summer, summer, August. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but, hey, I'm looking forward. I, I won't be picky about, about getting something fun to play with. And, and then Gotham Knights is, is the big one where I'm still I'm – still, not as excited as I want to be about that game yet, based on what we've seen so far. But I, I have little doubt. If the story, I think, if the story comes through on that in, in traditional Arkhamverse fashion, that could that could be like maybe the biggest game alongside Modern Warfare 2 this fall. Yeah, no, I, it's it's kind of funny that I feel like that in Midnight Suns. We're just talking about this on Beyond, but they they feel like they're superhero they're weird shaped superhero games yeah. you know like it's a batman game without batman and then it's a, a marvel game where everyone's got like magic powers and it's also a trading card game like it is it's kind of you know feels kind of shuffled you know, shuffled around a little bit a little bit weird but you know i'm willing to give them both a both the benefit of the doubt and you know hey it's something to play so god of war ragnarok <clears throat> is the big question mark especially for sony uh max what's your sort of current feeling is that actually going to make it out this year I, I really hope so. You know, I, I again, it's I, I think Sony's kind of just playing things close to the chest and, and hoping that, you know, nobody wants delays. Like, delays are demoralizing for, you know, people making the game and people you know, who want the game. And it's uh, I, I think it's it's smart to wait until they're maybe closer to the actual finish line before they, you know, announce when this thing is coming out. Uh, I think we were all we were all speculating September based on some leaked merchandise postings, but mm -hmm. then I heard some murmurs about November again, which, well, again, November's wide open, so right, that would be... September seems like a no go with Last of Us One remake in September, exactly, right? Yeah, They're not, yeah. Sony's not going to have have two first party games competing for your dollars no. in the same month, right? That would be, so that would be odd. Yeah, I mean, my my gut says that, and not that this is some brilliant take, but I think if 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 uh, that studio, if Santa Monica says we need more time, Sony's not going to tell them no, ship it. Like mm -hmm. that is the Gem. I mean, that's that is the the top of the pyramid game uh, in the Sony portfolio. So if they say, "Hey, you know what? We're going to polish it a little more," then Sony's just going to say, "All right, February or yeah. March and it is." There's and, you know, there's no harm in kind of holding off and being like, "Okay, here's your release date. Yeah. We're sure of it." So and, mm -hmm. and we are. We talk about all the time how you know, as gamers, we're we're so sick of these delays. We understand them because games are difficult to make. As Damon said, we're in unprecedented times. But I, I, I think we should maybe, uh, you were kind of alluding to this, Max, but I mean, let's applaud Sony for not just throwing a date out under pressure of the big summer showcases that maybe they're going to miss. Like, let's hope that the date they, they're going to give, even if, let's say it is November, if they don't tell us that till September, 
great because then we'll just know it's the game's mm-hmm. done at that point and it's it's absolutely not going to get delayed. I mean, how many times did Cyberpunk get delayed? Too and many. Exactly. Well, well, not enough. Apparently not enough. But <laughs> well, yeah. okay, true. Also true. Yes. Yeah, but I mean that had one of those. Little, it feels like, hey, this is going to be twenty minutes late, and it's just like maybe just you know just <laughs> hold off. So we're looking at you know. Maybe a, a less than spectacular holiday lineup. Um, a lot of games that kind of come with an asterisk on them, and currently nothing from Electronic Arts, Ubisoft, nothing new from Capcom, although they do have some new content for Resident Evil Village. But then even looking to 2023, there's a lot of big promises for 2023, but I believe there are currently exactly two games with release dates in 2023, Dead Space in January, and then Resident Evil 4 Remake in March, which is, what, March 23rd, 24th, something like that. Um, but Ryan, in the first, what, six months, we're supposedly getting Redfall, Starfield, Diablo 4. Yeah, I mean, in, in my experience now, almost 20 years doing this, it seems like the Q1 dates, those flags start to get planted into the ground in Q4 when, when they, they start to get a little mm. more certain of, of when they can ship this stuff. But yeah, I mean, if, if even most of the things that that Microsoft showed at their at their you know next 12 months showcase if most of that hits uh, in in that first half of 2023 window we're in for a treat cuz yeah i mean if if Starfield and Diablo 4 i'm just i'm selfishly hoping that those don't come out anywhere near each other cuz those are my mm-hmm. i i already know i'm in for a hundred plus hours on each of those video games because oh, yeah. they're I'm a major Diablo fan and big Todd Howard but as the game studios fan I'm very psyched for Starfield so I'm hoping those are those are somewhat apart I mean I think we can reasonably say that Redfall and Starfield being both Microsoft both Bethesda games they're not going to stack those right on top of each other we might I think we'll see one of them in like February and the other one in May and mm-hmm. my gut would just <laughs> say Redfall is probably going to be the sooner one and, and Starfield was going to take more as much time as it, as it needs and maybe we don't see that one till may but yeah where does diablo land in that and and there's uh there, there's a lot in that conference mm-hmm. too that if all and statistically not all of it's gonna land in the first half of 2023 but that's okay if if most of it does hit we're this this uh this unfortunate drought we're in right now at least on the xbox side is is going to be a, a thing of the past come you know this mm-hmm. time next year yeah, I mean, worst worst case scenario, some of these get pushed, and then we're not having the same conversation this time next year. <laughs> right. It means a better fall lineup. That's a good point. Well, we're bound to get a few more release dates for the fall, sort of plug in some of those holes. Surely something will come out in November. Uh, but now that we're past all of the summer event shows, we want to ask you, which was your favorite third-party showcase this June? Was it, um, oh, I'm sorry, actually, we asked you that last week. We had the results of that poll. We asked you, what was your favorite publisher showcase this June? And actually, the winner by a landslide, Ryan, was Xbox and Bethesda. Handily beat out PlayStation 50% wow. to 30%, and I, that's usually results on IGN.com go the opposite way. I, and this and that state of play was very well regarded. I it mean, I, Jonathan Dornbush was calling it their best state of play. You know, it wasn't their full proper showcase, but but as a state of play, it was a, it was a great thing. And yeah, I thought Microsoft had a solid showcase too. Yeah, I'm I'm, a, I'm happy to hear that the IGN audience was was enthusiastic about the 90 minutes of, uh, of games that Xbox delivered. They also had a ton to show off, which was great. I mean, Sony was awesome. I think there were some wonderful surprises in there. Very excited for RE4 again. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, again, it, that was also, it was sort of oddly before everything else. Like, they kind of kicked things off. True. And then Microsoft was like, oh, hey, here's our showcase. It's an hour and a half long. Oh, and by the way, we're having a second one, also an hour and a half long. And that's awesome. That was It was great. They had that much to show off. I think it was also really smart to be like, these are all things that are coming out in the first half of 2023. And again, mm-hmm. that might change, but I think that was a really sort of nice way of, uh, you know, keeping our expectations in check and, and you know, knowing, because it's, we, you know, we had this a few years back with, with Sony announcing a whole bunch of PS4 games that were everything we wanted on our, you know, ultimate Christmas list. And then that stuff kind of trickled out over the course of, what, two or three years after that. And it's... Yeah. It's, it's fun to be excited for things, but when you're excited for too long, you get that kind of hype fatigue. So, you know. Okay, before we go, a poll for you to vote on for next episode. Which confirmed next-gen fall game are you most looking forward to? Is it The Last of Us Part 1 Remake? Is it Gotham Knights? Is it Forspoken? Make sure to vote at IGN.com, and we'll share the results with you next episode. And that's going to do it for this edition of Next Gen Console Watch. Thank you to Ryan. Thank you to Max for sitting in for Jonathan this week. Thank you to everyone working behind the scenes in both of our L.A. and San Francisco studios to make this episode possible. We'll be back next week. 
uh, 6 a.m. Pacific Friday, uh, 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern with more PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X news. We'll see you then.